today what I'm going to do as part of this um, seminar is to talk to you about understanding shoppers, but from an analytical point of view. So it's basically using the tools that Google Analytics provides uh, to obviously spot trends and to understand you know, how your customers are using your website. In short, I mean basically it's, it's a free tool provided by Google um, and it's, it's there to give webmasters um, a sort of insight into you know, the activity uh, on your website so you can track things like you know, where your website traffic comes from, um, how long visitors spend on the site, um, how many pages uh, the average user visits. Uh, it kind of paints a picture for you so you get uh, a feel of what your customers are, are using on your website, what's working, what's not working, how many new visitors compared to returning visitors. You know, really, it, it gives you a whole wealth of information uh, to use. Um, now, they also provide uh, e-commerce tracking. There's a separate bit of analytics that actually focuses just on e-commerce. And with e-commerce tracking, uh, the main difference is that you can really drill down into each uh, transaction on your website and it gives you things like the conversion rate, the number of transactions, uh, the average order value, um, the total number of, of purchased products. So again, it takes that, um, that sort of understanding of what your customers do a step further and actually helps you understand in the, in the sort of buying process, you know, what are, what, what are they like, what do they look like, how much do they spend, um, what pages they view. Um, so there's all, all the features like, uh, for example, visits to purchase. Um, so it gives you detailed information on um, how many visits it takes before they actually buy something. So again, it gives you information about sort of trends and, and what your shoppers are actually sort of doing as they, as they hit your site. Um, there's also a, a tool which goes through the dates of purchase as well. So again, um, shows you the sort of uh, purchase life cycle, if you like. So again, you know, what you'd expect to see is that it's zero days. So when they come to the site, they engage and they buy straight away. Um, but what's interesting is you can actually go back and have a look. Okay, in this cycle, um, how common is it that people actually take you know, seven days, a month, up to, you know, up to 365 days, up to a whole year before they come back and purchase something? Um, all these tools are, are specifically with e-commerce tracking. So if you've got, you know, if you've got an e-commerce website, um, you know, be definitely to use it really. So, transactional data from every purchase, um, obviously, what the, the required field is um, the actual transactional ID, so you can easily track uh, yeah, you've got a number of signs to each purchase. Um, but it also contains information like the total of the order, applicable um, tax, shipping, um, sort of details of the customer. So, that specific transaction data is, is then sent. You also get item data, which is sent. So again, uh, the SKU, the product, product name, uh, the category or product variation, unit price and quantity. So again, with all this data that's being sent to Google Analytics, it's, it's invaluable because you've got all that information about each transaction. You can really understand you know, what the products are popular. Uh, look at data segmentation. Obviously, look at all the data that you've got and actually work out, okay, how can I break it down so I can understand individual aspects of, of the site and what's happening within, within the analytics. Now, we get a lot of uh, prospective clients that we talk to um, that don't segment, for example, new versus returning visitors. So they'll say to us, oh, well, we've actually got a conversion rate of 4% on our website. We'll actually say, well, is that a true reflection of how your website's performing? Because it's obvious that you know, new visitors compared to returning visitors are going to be completely different. And they actually then go, well, actually, no, I don't know that. And when you actually then drill down further, it's only 2.49% of new visitors compared to almost 8% of returning visitors. So you get further segmentation ideas. Um, obviously, common ones are traffic sources. So if you spend a lot of marketing, you obviously want to separate out these visitors and actually look at how your marketing is performing across, across each one. So you want to look at your organic against your paid. It might be that. With your paid search, you can your PPC campaign set up in a way that um, you're getting huge bounce rates. You know, if, if your PPC is not working, but your organic is working, by segmenting, so segmenting the data, you can actually look at, okay, well, how does each marketing channel, you know, what value am I getting from the visitors? Um, so goals are a great way, as I said, not just for um, e-commerce transactions, but you can assign goals to different things you want to track. 
So as standard, Google Analytics has options you can you can set a goal for, for example, it will flag up if somebody spends more than five minutes on the site. You can then accept this segment, uh, those customers into a different pot, and you can actually then see, okay, well, these people that spend a lot of time on the site, what they're looking at. With, uh, with goals is you can add a funnel. So if you think of the end goal, you can add a funnel to actually then show you the process from getting from A to B. So, for example, in this one, you know, your standard one would be a shopping cart. And obviously, from, from the start of actually going into the shopping cart, there's a certain process that it will take before you get to the confirmation. So, by using a funnel, you can see, obviously, this section is going to blow that, but the, the, the people that have actually then gone, okay, we'll put these products into our shopping cart. And then on each stage, so the next stage is then registering, the next stage is creating an account, shipping, payment confirmation and at each stage of the shopping cart process it gives you a lot of information as to okay where am I losing my customers and this might give you an insight into the way that the shopping cart is set up so for example um, if there's over complicated um, if there's a lot of data there that it's not easy for customers to actually understand you know the next process they may be bailing out they may be leaving um, on the flip side of that if there's not enough information People get so far through the checkout process and go, well, actually, you know, I'm, I'm lacking something. There's something that I want to know, or there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a process missing. If there's information, there's not enough information, then there's another reason for them to, to, to bail out. Um, so the key thing with goals is if you take e commerce transactions out of the equation, what else do you want to measure? What else can you do with this site in order to, to qualify success? So, I only talked to Tommy briefly, newsletter signups is a great one because, again, it shows engagement, it shows interaction with your audience. Um, PDF or white paper downloads, um, if, you're a, if, you, if your site in particular, um, like I suppose the fashion, if you've got sizing guides and things like that, you may see it as its actual goal to actually be able to, to you know, provide people with this use, useful information. Um, so, for example, a sizing guide, you may want for a conversion. Um, video views. Video is the kind of closest you'll get to actually making the thing up and looking at it. Um, so videos give you an indication of how engaged people are with that product. Again, we, we took some promotional pages, you know, any competition or any promotion that you run on the site at all, whether it be sale items, whether it be competition or Twitter codes or anything like that, you want to measure the success of all of it because you want to know that the effort and time you're putting into it, you actually see where it's turned from. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. So, acquisition uh, is all about how uh, understanding how customers get to the e-commerce website. First of all, you want to know how people get there. You know, which marketing channels generate the most revenue? If you're spending a fortune on PPC, you want to know that you're getting a return on investment from it. Um, again, which social media platforms are the most referrals? Do I need to re rethink my social campaign? What type of keywords do, do my customers search for? Um, gives you a detailed information about, you know, do people search for branded, do they search for generic terms, are there, is there particular product searches? Um, all this information is really useful because, again, if you're taking part in a, an organic campaign uh, or a BBC campaign, you can reuse that information to then think about your search strategy and actually then maybe go off in a different direction if, if what you thought was more, you know, generic versus product searches or vice versa. What creative messages are most popular with customers? So the second step is engagement, and this is all about interaction and then building that relationship with your customers. So the most obvious thing is a bounce rate, yeah, honestly, again, newsletter signups. Um, again, it gives you an idea of the people that are actually invested in what you have to say. Um, so that's a really good indicator on how the relationship strength is between you and your customers. Um, RSS subscriptions. Again, if, you, if your site has RSS feeds. Do people care about what you want to say? You know, if you have a blog, do people actually read your blog? Do, are people interested in your views? You've got obviously add to cards, you've got social interactions on the site. So things like uh, your share buttons, your like buttons, you know, are people give me the thumbs up? The last thing uh, is conversion. Obviously this is where uh, this is where your site ultimately will be a success or a failure. Now it is more than just revenue. I know obviously e-commerce sites are all geared towards selling. But you can do a lot more. Um, a conversion doesn't have to be just a sale. So obviously you've got online uh, transactions. Um, return on investment, 
again, you know, we, we looked at uh, talking about the PPC campaigns, um, or, or in fact SEO campaigns. If you're spending a lot of money on your marketing activities, you want to know that you're getting that return on investment. <coughs> Average order values. Um, you may have, uh, you know, in, in your mind, or obviously with being in a certain industry for so long, you'll have an idea of average order values of what, you, what each average order value should be. Um, this will give you insights as to are you going to be lower than the value should be. If, if your average order value is £50 and your site is doing it at, say, £75, £80, you know, why is that? Why is your site working? So internal campaign performance. So again, the way that you, if you've got end of stock items, if you've got sale items, the way in which people actually interact and buy with those, you will, you'll instantly know that from the data, you know, are people actually buying sale items, are we managing to shift the stock that we've reduced? All these things kind of go above and beyond just the online transaction, it gives you more information to, to improve your site.